It is Putnam County League action tonight on WOSN. We are at Columbus Grove High School, where the Bulldogs hosting the Pandora Gilboa Rockets in a PCL showdown. Good evening, everyone, alongside John Zerby. I'm Patrick Chandler. A PCL matchup between these two teams, Columbus Grove, uh, coming into the season nine and seven. Pandora Gilboa having a uh, pretty impressive weekend last weekend, 15 and two. They are six and one overall. And uh, looking forward to a good one tonight. We certainly hope, John Zerby. I think it's going to be a great game. It's fun because it's a weeknight game. It's also fun because these schools are sit right next to each other on Route 12, and they do it on purpose this way. I talked to Columbus Grove AD Terry Schnipke before the game, and he said they set this up on purpose through the week. You know, with these two schools having this rivalry, it's a fun matchup on a Tuesday night. It's a short trip, and we are shortly waiting for the tip-off between these two basketball teams. And here we go. We are underway. The tip controlled by the Bulldogs. Kyle Hopkins bringing it up. Getting us started here is Landon Best. Getting around it. Bo Brunesser, Zach Reynolds also on the floor with Trenton Barraza for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. One of the things to look for quickly is this Pandora Gilboa defense, how they pressure and then try to get up and down the floor. Off balance shot, no good by Bernessa. Rebound corralled there by Nate Mag. And the Rockets quickly back down the floor for their first possession in this one. I like watching Nate Mag. He hustles on the defensive end and then grabs the rebound and quickly gets to the other end offensively and gets things set up for the Rockets. Colin Harris trying to slice in between the defense and ball goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Rockets. And bound back into Colin Harris. Now to Aiden Harris. Let's that three-pointer go. It is up and good. Dale's concrete three-pointer. You're going to have to extend defensively on Aiden Harris if you're going to let him shoot a wide-open shot like that. He's averaging 18 points a game. He is the key player for this Rockets team. He is dynamic. Nice shot on the Union Bank instant replay, and it's an early 3-0 lead for the visitors. And now here's a steal. Aiden Harris swatting that one away and then poked out of bounds by Brunesser. It will be PG basketball. I mentioned just a few minutes ago, Pandora Gilboa, they can shoot, they can get in their sets, they can be patient, but what they really love to do is play aggressive defensively, create a turnover, and then get down the floor and transition and score. And here is a turnover. Brunesser in there again, puts it up and in with the right hand. Yeah, Bo Bernesser coming into this game averaging almost 13 points a game. He's one of those guys that, you know, if you're Grove, you really need balanced scoring tonight. Bernesser, Reynolds, Barraza, Lane and Best. You need all these guys to contribute if you're going to compete with these Rockets. Aiden Harris pulls up. No good. Barraza with the rebound. Bernesser, one of these guys who uh, is good with uh, stealing the basketball. 1.68 steals per game. That's second on the team. Also 16 blocks. So. Uh, he puts up the points, but also has kind of those uh, more spectacular uh, defensive plays. He's such a good athlete, and that's the biggest thing is he can make plays. As you see him here in the lane, he's going to get the second uh, basket of the night for the Bulldogs. Bernesser all alone in the paint. Not something that Pandora Gilbo coach Mike Lee wants to hear very much. And it's 4-3 to three on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard. And, you know, I, I know that you look at the records, and on paper it looks like it's going to be one-sided, but that's the thing I love about this Putnam County League matchup is that these two schools, they're going to battle tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're both going to get after it. Corner three is no good. Ball loose. And we've got a scrum for it by the charity stripe. And I think, they're, yeah, they're going to call it. Possession arrow favoring the Rockets. I think the thing with Grove is they've, they come into the season, they, they have a lot of guys returning, but a lot of these guys are juniors and maybe didn't see a ton of time last year, just developing. I think that, you know, they're seeing Nate Mag get that bucket there yep. for the Rockets, but, you know, if they can keep developing, that record will continue to improve. Chance of he's a farmer coming from the <laughs> crowd. <laughs> Is that really a unique thing in this area? Uh, you know, he's pretty normal, I well, guess, former, right? There's a nice block by Aiden Harris. <laughs> a farmer in Putnam County, get out of town. 
that's easy because you're a farmer. You know, I would I would think they would be saying he's not a farmer. That would be a little bit more, <laughs> right. you know, like yeah. a, he'd stand out a little bit more. You know, he's a banker, something like that. <laughs> Trenton Barraza short on the rim. Offensive rebound pulled down by the Bulldogs. Trying to draw some contact in there. Passes away, Barraza has it, and they will reset in the hands of Kyle Hopkins. You see great defense by Aiden Harris. He did a good job of just setting his feet, staying straight up. Landon Best was going at him, but was fortunately able to save that possession for the Bulldogs. They're getting another chance here. Barraza thought about the three, drives in, nice move. He gets in for two. He's such a good athlete, I'm telling you. You see that uh, Colin Harris was looking for Nate Mag, and Nate Mag wasn't quite ready for it, but going back to Trent Barraza, we're going to say his name a lot tonight. He's such an athlete. And, you know, looking at him on the court, you just you, you think, man, he you know he can do so many things, and it's true. He, he's such a good athlete to watch, and he's he's, he's a leader of this team. Raza look averaging 11 points a game heading into this contest, and he is one of the guys that's going to need to keep and get going if they want to win this one. That shot off the front iron, rebound Bernesser. That one just a little too strong. Tap in, doesn't go, and it's going to go back to PG. Well, I like the aggressiveness there by Grove. I mean, they had a couple good looks, Barraza and Burnester as well, getting offensive rebounds. I think that's one of the things they've struggled with this year is rebounding, but uh, just couldn't get it to go. Halfway through this first quarter, it is a 6-5 Grove lead. Working very strong here as Mag blocked from behind by Zach Reynolds. Yeah, Mag had a great backdoor cut, but Zach Reynolds recovered, did a good job of, of making sure that Nate Mag was going to pay, and it was a clean block. PG maintains possession. Here's Harris from downtown. That was partially blocked and fouled in the process. That's rough because now it's going to give Aiden Harris three opportunities here from the free throw line, but you know, it looked like he was going to get a clean shot anyway, that the, that the foul came after the shot, and that's, that's a tough break for the, for the Bulldogs. Harris, a 75% free throw shooter, knocks down the first one. That will tie this one up at six. Second one is good. Now, I thought they signaled that he was only going to get two shots. I thought maybe his foot was on the line, but they're going to give him three. Third one is good. That's the thing about Aiden Harris. You mentioned the 75% you know, free throw shooter. He's shot 82 free throws this year, so he's been to the free throw line quite a bit. You can count on Aiden Harris, and make Aiden Harris making shots if he goes to the free throw line. Indeed, he did there, giving PG a two-point lead. 3.26 remaining here in the first quarter. And a turnover forced. Colin Harris brings it up and gets it back top of the key. Looking for some penetration there, and Steve and instead kicks it back out to Harris. Yeah, Grove doing a really nice job of playing pressure, man-to-man -man defense here. They're switching and making it really tough for Pandora Gilbo to get an open look. Indeed they are going to try and force the action there. An off-balance layup is up and in there for Harris. And it's a four-point PG lead. He's six foot four, Patrick, but he's got a long wingspan too. You see him getting in the entry lane uh, and making turnovers defensively. And then when he gets in the lane, it's really difficult to block him because his wingspan is so long. Grove back to work on offense. Here's Barraza, double teamed. Spins around, hook shot up and in. And I like that mentality that they're going to take it inside, that they're going to be aggressive and take the ball at Pandora Gilbo, and they're not going to just get into a set, but they're going to they're dictate their own tempo on offense. You see no hurry from either side. Two point rocket lead coming up on two minutes remaining. Driving that baseline, and ball is knocked out. Last touched by Pandora Gilboa. Well, it looked like potentially that it was going to be a foul, but they're going to say that Kyle Hopkins actually did a nice job but defensively, and they're going to say that Pandora Gilboa 
offensive player stepped out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover. Owen Huffman checking in for the first time for the Rockets. He will take the place of Aiden Morris. Also, Kylan Mays coming in for the Bulldogs. That ball is loose and then off the foot of Zach Neuschwander, who was also checked into the contest for the Rockets. And I think if you're Grove, you've, you, you have to be very leery of turning the ball over right now. Pandora Gilboa being extremely aggressive defensively. And if you're Grove, you got to settle down here a little bit and make sure you can get into your set. Hopkins brings it across the timeline as we reach the final 90 seconds in the first quarter. A pretty brisk moving first quarter, not a lot of stoppage, really not a lot of fouls, only one foul between the two teams. It's been a really clean first quarter, plus the officials have done a really good job of letting these guys play. So, of course, as soon as we say that, they're <laughs> going to have a guy go to the free throw line. <laughs> Colin Harris on the foul, that's his first. And that will send Barraza to the line for the first time tonight. That's a, part, that's a piece of Trent Barraza's game is, you know, I think a lot of times kids love to be shooters. They love to be the Steph Curry's of the world and drain triples. But Barraza's kind of old school. He goes inside. I mean, he's six foot two, so he has the size. But he goes inside. And not only does he go inside, but he's not afraid to pump fake and get guys off their feet so he yep. can go to the free throw line. There's uh, more shots available than just layups and 24-foot three-pointers. There's a whole mid-range that you can explore when you're out there. One-point lead for the Rockets. Coming up on a minute, looking to extend that here before the end of the first quarter. Here's a Dale's Concrete three-pointer. That one off the rim and no good. That's a good rebound by Landon Best there for the Bulldogs, making sure that he cleared things out. And then he walked it up. He had defense by Owen Huffman guarding, but he did a nice job there. And as you see, he's getting pressure and doubled. He's doing a good job of maintaining that pressure. Good defense by the Rockets, able to maintain possession. However, is the, are the Bulldogs. Hopkins with it as we come up on 24 seconds. And it looks like they're going to hold for last shot. See Pandora Gilboa making a few changes defensively, switching who's guarding who. And Almost. Like, yeah, see Kyle Hopkins, I think, got away yeah. with one there. Looking for something, and there is Colin Harris swapping that one out. Seven seconds now. It'll still be Grove basketball. I think the one thing Grove may want to consider, and this is kind of old school, but, you know, you're seeing a lot of a lot of chest passes to the to the wing, and Pandora Gilboa is just waiting, baiting them. You know, it, it might be one of those things that you might want to look to the bounce pass a little bit. Kicks the ball in. Best has it. Three seconds. Pulls up. 18-footer is short. That is going to wrap up the first quarter of action. It is 10-9. Pandora Gilboa on top. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future, call 419-225-6067 or visit metzgerfinancialservices.com. And Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora is our quarter sponsor, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. I read about scrap cars and I think, you know, there are maybe some scrap cars in my neighborhood I'd like to that's a good take deal in right for there. some people. I'm telling you, that's a good deal. <laughs> I'm going I'm to have to do that one of these days. Take other people's scrap cars in? or uh, You know, I mean, I have teenagers driving, so, you know, oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> it, it, it's going to happen soon, I can tell you. Right. They say don't repair your, your, your teenager's car. That's, that's, that's the reason for that. Yeah. Second quarter underway here from Columbus Grove. Pandora Gilboa with a one-point lead in what has been a defensive struggle here so far. 
It has. I mean, and both teams kind of out of the flow as you see a triple try by Evan Sauter. It's, it's been tough, and you can see that maybe playing on a Tuesday night after a weekend full of games, both teams are a little tight, maybe a little tired. Nice take inside there. Doesn't get go by Harris. Second chance opportunity doesn't go. And ball is loose, and the Rockets get it back. And that's and that's the thing with Grove. They got a rebound. Pandora Gilboa is relentless as you see Nate Mack dream, drill the triple. The farmer knocks down the triple. 13 to 9 PG. I think if you're Grove tonight too, you don't want to try to match. Pandora every possession. You know, if you do that, then you could get yourself in trouble. I think you just gotta offensively come down, run your sets, get what you can get. Nice pass for Barraza, and he finds inside Kyle Hopkins, and it, what a nice looking play there. Excuse the, me, Kylan Mays. Yeah, Kylan Mays, a 6'1 junior. Averaging 1.9 points a game, and he's got two right now. Bring it to within a two point lead, and we'll have a stoppage here, and a foul. I've been able to watch Kylan Mays, you know, I've seen Grove a couple times this year. I like what he comes and brings in off the bench. Uh, he brings some physicality, as you can see. Uh, but he also has, you know, some, a skill set, too. So uh, he brings a lot of good things to the Bulldogs team. Rocket basketball. And Morris has it. Looking for some space inside, but the Grove defense closes up very nicely. So we'll try it again. Nothing doing. And losing the basketball and falling down. Hopefully he's okay. Morris looks like he's all right. Trent Barraza playing really good defense out there, forcing him to almost create a turnover. As you can see, that tough break for Grove there. It looked like they had a stop defensively, but on the rebound, it looks like Evan Sauter is going to be called out of bounds. But that's a good that's a good stop for for Grove defensively. Yeah, if that's the only shot that you allow, really just too far underneath the basket, if you're a Groves defense, you'll live with that the entire game. I would say like early in the game, they're getting some really wide open looks. Since then, Grove has really tightened up their defense. Yeah. Pandora Gilboa is struggling to get a good shot off. PG, of course, in their game against Bluffton on Saturday. That one a very close contest, and then PG just exploded with a 20 to nothing run to uh, put Bluffton away. Here's a Dale's Concrete three-pointer. That one, no good. Zach Neuschwanner unable to get that one to go, and it'll be a turnover. Well, and that's the thing about Pandora Gilboa. You know, they they play a pretty tough uh, BVC schedule, but they play a tough Putnam County League schedule. So, and, and then, you know, on a night, on a Saturday, they play a team like Bluffton. You know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. every night's going to be a difficult challenge. And you'll talk to coaches, and I've talked to coaches for a number of years, and they think that wayward pass there is going to be a turnover for Columbus Grove. And uh, most coaches that I've talked to, maybe all the coaches that I've talked to, would say, hey, they like having these competitive matchups, especially when it gets closer to tournament time, yep. so that they know, hey, when we go up against another tough team in the playoffs, which we will at some point, it won't be the first time we've right. seen a really good basketball team. And that's the beauty of, you know, sports like basketball and baseball where you're already in the tournament you know football it's a little different because you know you could I mean with 16 teams in the you know now it's a little bit easier but if you don't if you if you, if you don't get in because of tough teams you play it's, it's difficult but in basketball it doesn't matter so record doesn't matter it, it does but at the same time you like you said you want to be battle tested come tournament time foul on Kyle Hopkins it's his first team second and that will put Colin Harris at the line. And the first free throw is no good. 55% from the charity stripe this season. 33 of 59 coming in. And second free throw is no good. But the Rockets get it back. Kind of push it back in. And the ball is loose and into the hands of Columbus Grove. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We will take it as well. 4.58 remaining in the second quarter. You're watching high school basketball action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Sprunger Insurance with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets! 
And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Just under five minutes remaining in the second quarter. It's a two-point lead for Columbus Grove. And uh, as we mentioned, has been a defensive struggle here so far. Only one bucket apiece for the two teams here in the first three minutes of the and second I, quarter. Yeah, and I think uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Both teams playing great defense, but I also think that there's been a lack of preparation time. You know, as you go into this game, typically you have a whole week to prepare for a team. And, you know, they've turned around. They probably had yesterday to walk through some things. So, you know, I mean, there's not a lot of preparation goes into this. So you can see, I wouldn't call it ugly basketball, but just teams struggling to put the ball in the bucket right now. So it's not uncommon to have rivals, neighbors. Here's a Dales Concrete three-pointer. That one high off the back iron and into the hands of Pandora Gilboa. Even with the uh, with the lack of preparation time, you know, you wouldn't be surprised to see a, a low scoring affair tonight between these two, you know, rivals and neighbors and uh, PCL foes. Yeah, I mean, you, you got that competitiveness. They're giving both. They're giving their best at both ends. You know, a lot of times you'll see teams <clears throat> play play. You know, one end better than the other end. But you see both these schools playing good offensively and giving a great effort defensively as well. And so far, for those of you who like defense, this is your game without a shadow of a doubt. 13 11 here is best driving strong, and he is fouled. And that is going to send him to the line as Owen Huffman picks up his first foul. It's a good take by Landon Best, and I think that that's something that, you know, coming into this game, he's averaging a little over 11 points a game. I think if he can get going, he's a guy who can really be a difference maker for this Columbus Grove basketball team. Best at the line. His first one doesn't go. Averaging 11.3 points, so he is one of the scoring leaders for this Columbus Grove basketball team. And the second free throw is up and good. Thirteen to twelve. And I like even what they're doing defensively, putting just a little bit of a press on, uh, almost creating a turnover there, but getting rebounds. Grove really putting Pandora Gilboa. I mean, I think they got them confused a little bit, especially trying to break the press. Morris off balance shot doesn't go, and now Columbus Grove in the hands of Trenton Barraza with an opportunity to take the lead. It would be their first lead of the contest. Barraza puts it up, 15 footer off the glass, no good. Tipped away and into the hands of Columbus Grove. Kyle Hopkins is there, and Barraza will reset the offense. Three minutes remaining in the first half. And they are just out hustling right now to get those offensive rebounds, to get those second opportunities. Really doing a good job of, of, of boxing out and then hustling after the basketball. They're just struggling to put the ball in the hole. We'll have a foul here. That is going to be his, Aiden Harris, his first. Second on the team. And Pandora Gobo can score at Will Patrick. They can score 20 points in two minutes. So you got to be really careful. If you're Columbus Grove right now, you, you're feeling really good about how you've played in this first half so far. You've controlled this game, and you've made it your game. And you see another offensive rebound by Bo Burnesser. That gives Grove their first lead. 14 to 13, Grove on the second chance. Meg back on the other side, and he is blocked and fouled by Burnesser. Second one on Bo. It's a nice looking play by Nate Mag to get down the floor. And if you blink, Pandora Gilbo is going to be by you. I mean, it was that quick down the floor. Nate Mag taking the ball to the hole. That gives Bo Burnesser his second foul. I, I like that strategy by the Rockets to kind of go up Bo Burnesser because he's doing a lot of different things, both offensive, offensively and defensively as well. So that puts Nate Mag at the line, 64% for the season, 9 of 14, make it 10 of 15. Yeah, he's got a sweet looking stroke. You can tell he's practiced free throws quite a bit growing up. Looks like a, like a natural from the free throw line. Tied at 14, and PG has been taking the lead 15 14. And 
And ball, errant pass into the hands of PG. Long pass if Colin Harris saves it. Back into the hands of Zach Neuschwander. Now here's Harris, nice Euro step. Couldn't get it to go out of the hands of Mag and back into the hands of Columbus Grove. You know, I know Grove wants to, or excuse me, Pandora Gilbo wants to get up the floor quick. I know that. But it's almost like they're rushing it too much. It's almost created the turnover and then quickly throwing up a shot in the lane. I, I think they can get out and transition. And I know Coach Mike Lee is just such an awesome coach. He'll probably communicate something to that at halftime. But, you know, I think that they can be a little bit more patient on offense to get the look that they want. One twenty remaining in the first half. One point lead for PG Grove with a chance to take the lead again. Best 40. Three-pointer no good into the hands of the Rockets. And we'll see if they take a little bit more time on offense. Nope, won't have an opportunity. Barraza with the steal. What a sweet play by Trenton Barraza. Coming out from nowhere to pick that ball off. Running back has good hands. Who would have seen that? <laughs> <laughs> Best camp inside. Ball is loose out of the hands of Zach Reynolds and back into the hands of Pandora Gilboa with 46 seconds left. Right now, the turnover margin is Grove has six, Pandora Gilboa has three. You know, if you're if you're Grove, you can't you can't give Pandora Gilboa three extra looks at the basket. Working inside, off balance shot by Morris, can't get it to go, and a foul. Yeah, and that may be Mo Bernesser's third foul. I, I don't know if Trenton Barraza was there too, but we're gonna see who they get. It is, that's Bernesser's third. Looks like they got him from the backside, used his body, and that is going to be a major problem with 26 seconds to go in the half because Bo Bernesser needs to stay on the floor for the, for the Bulldogs. That puts Morris at the line, six of 14 on the season, and doesn't get the first one. I like the way Aiden Morris plays. He's a hustler. He gets yep. out there and he's he's all over the floor. Doesn't always get, you know, the points, but. Gets the second one. Two point lead for PG. 22 seconds left in the first half. Barraza double teamed. Spins out of a triple teamed and he's able to get away. Here is Bernesser, 11 seconds. He floats up and he will head to the line to shoot two. And that's why he needs to stay on the floor because he does so much offensively. They can't afford him to be off the floor in, in foul trouble. Bo Bernesser getting himself to the free throw line with just 10 seconds to go here in the first half. That's going to be the first on Zach Neuschwander. First one is good. Both teams have scored six points in this quarter. Make it seven for Columbus Grove. And we are tied at 16. You can see that uh, they're going to have Kylan Mace check in here to make sure Bernesser doesn't get that fourth foul, which would be just crucial now. Seven seconds before halftime. Four seconds. Trap. Shot the buzzer by Harris is in. How about that to finish the half for Pandora Gilboa? It's a 19-16 lead for the Rockets. We head to halftime here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Dale's Concrete. Call Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Our quarter sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. And our instant replay sponsor tonight is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Just about ready for the third quarter. It's a 19-16 lead for Pandora Gilboa. Patrick Campbell, John Zerby here with you. And I tell you what, Pandora Gilboa hitting a three-pointer right as the buzzer went. And it's one of those things where you think, man, this is kind of a nip and tuck game. That three-pointer might not mean anything in 16 minutes, but it could be the deciding factor of the game, too. Well, and you know, you come into the first half, and I really give Grove a lot of credit. They did a great job of 
frustrating Pandora Gobo offensively. And if you're Coach Connor Coles, you you did a good job playing it defensively. But if you're if you're Pandora, you know you probably talked about some things how you can create better looks for yourself. And they're a high scoring team, Patrick. So you have to think at some point they're going to start knocking down buckets. And I'm sure that's something that's in the back of the heads of uh, many of the Columbus Grove players and the faithful that have turned out here tonight on a Tuesday night is that this is a team in Pandora Gilboa that can put up points in a hurry. Is this the start of it? Dale's concrete three-pointer is no good, but they are getting looks. It's a nice rebound there by Zach Reynolds. That's one thing I would say Grove has done well tonight is they've rebounded. They've not really given Pandora Gilboa a lot of second opportunities. Uh, but the one thing they've struggled with is turnovers, which we've seen there. They, they, they have done that. They're right now, they're at seven turnovers. And so it's just one of the things they'll have to clean up if they want to make sure that they get out of here with a win tonight. That is another turnover, first one of this second half. Rocket basketball into the hands of Aiden Harris. Check there by... Bo Burnesser. Burnesser on the court with three fouls. Obviously, Columbus Grove not wanting him to pick up his fourth foul at all during the game, but certainly not early here in the third quarter. And it's just one of those situations where, you know, you probably need to sit him, but you can't. I mean, you just, he mm -hmm. does so much for this team that if you sit him, you, you know where that's going. And a turnover. Oh, that was going to be forced. Landon Best able to get it back. It's the ball away. Burnesser has it. He's going to take the Dales concrete three and hits it. There's another good reason to keep him in the game because he can shoot in the lane and he can shoot behind the arc. And we'll have a blocking foul on the other end against Landon Best. Best did a nice job of getting his getting back on defense. He just didn't quite have his feet set, and, and Owen Huffman did a really good job of penetrating. Drawing that foul and now getting the opportunity to go to the free throw line. Free throw on the way, no good. Pandora Gilboa doing a great job. Just the, the psychology of anytime Grove ties the game or takes the lead, Pandora Gilboa responds instantly in some form or fashion. There's a nice response, Zach Reynolds taking it up with the right hand to tie this one up again at 21. Yeah, that was a nice little burst out of Zach Reynolds. I'd, I'd like to see that more. He took it to the hole there and really was undefended, not because they didn't have people there, but he just took a, did a nice job of taking it to the hole. Driving in strong is Aiden Morris, and he will head to the line. Both these teams attacking the paint, going to the rim, I mean, you know, we, we talked about it earlier, but, you know, there's a lot of teams that just love to shoot the three. You know, both these teams here, they will shoot it if mm -hmm. they have to, but their primary goal is to get to the rim. That's the second foul on Landon Best. Aiden Morris connecting with his first free throw. Aiden Morris is a 70% free throw shooter, has a nice stroke. Hits the second. 23-21 Rockets. Yeah, they're gonna get, yeah, they're get the double dribble, yep. yeah. It's almost like he got a little confused looking up the floor. The pre you know, it wasn't a ton of pressure, but just enough to kind of throw him off a little bit, and that's gonna be another turnover for the Bulldogs. NBA, perhaps you can get away with that, but uh, not here in the Putnam County League. Boy, you can get away with anything in the NBA. <laughs> it's rough to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, strong take inside by Colin Harris. If I had known that's what the NBA was going to become, I wouldn't have worked so much on ball handling. <laughs> it's like, I can just carry this thing. Here's a kick. <laughs> and, you know, I hate to say this because, you know, I'm showing our age here, Patrick, but, you know, it was fun to watch the NBA when we were kids. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like everything, and now it's really a struggle to turn it on. I have very few old man takes, <laughs> but uh, that's one of them. Just <laughs> I've sat down and tried to watch the NBA, and I just think, man, it was and, – and, again, I recognize I'm a Bulls fan, so, yes. Same it was here. a lot more. Yeah, it was a lot more fun yeah. when, you know, we were winning championships, but even without that, it's still just kind of a tough product to watch. And ball's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay on that side of the court. 
Grove's doing a really good job of not allowing Pandora to get into the lane without being, without getting physical. I mean, they, they are challenging every shot. And what a good job by Trent Barraza there. I'll tell you, he is just a force. He got open there, and no matter what Pandora did defensively, it's really a struggle to guard him. Barraza with the and one. It's going to be the second foul on Owen Huffman. And a chance for a three-point play here for the Bulldogs to pull back within one. They just keep, they, they, they're they hanging around. I mean, even when Pandora slightly starts to get rolling here, you think they may pull ahead and it, there might be a wide gap and Grove just claws back as you see Barraza knock this one down too. Largest lead of the game for the Rockets has been four points. They just had that a moment ago. Now it's back down to one. Columbus Grove had a one-point lead at one point. That is their largest lead. Here's Neuschwander taking it, kicking it back out. Dale's concrete three-pointer off the mark. It's a really nice take by Zach Neuschwander. He did a good job of finding Aiden Morris. Couldn't, couldn't knock down the triple, but nice drive there. Here's another Dale's concrete three by Barraza, and his goes down for the Columbus Grove lead. Back the other way come the Rockets, and that shot by Colin Harris doesn't go. Here come the Bulldogs. Largest lead of the game at two. Well, Grove is just doing a good job of staying calm under the pressure circumstances. And Pandora Gilboa, like I said in the first half, I just feel like they're maybe rushing things a, a little too much. It's like, I know they want to get out in transition, but uh, so much so that they're not getting really good looks and then mm -hmm. turning the ball over as well. 6-0 run for Columbus Grove. They try to expand on their two-point lead. And I think if you're Grove, what they've done is they've knocked down shots. And I know that sounds kind of like simplistic, like, yeah, you have to make shots. But, you know, you, you do have to make shots when you're playing a team like Pandora Gilbo, who's going to score a lot of points. Colin Harris on the foul. That's going to be his second. And yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm looking around the crowd here tonight. I'm struck by the energy that the Pandora Gilboa student section has brought here to Columbus Grove. You hear the, I imagine here on our broadcast, you hear the D up chants. I know they're right underneath our broadcast position, but they've uh, they, they brought their, their hard hats and safety vests and they're ready to go. And I don't, I don't know how much Kids think that that matters, but it does. It really, when you can get a student section behind your team, I'm telling you what, that can really energize a, a young ball club. Without a shadow of a doubt. And it's going to be Pandora Gilboa basketball. 3.36 remaining. A two-point Grove lead on the Sprunger Insurance scoreboard here in this Northwest Ohio Recycling third quarter. Rockets looking to tie or take the lead, which is the position that they've had most of the evening. Well, if I'm Pandora Gilbo, I'm, I'm looking at Aiden Harris right now. He's the man on this team. He's the guy that, you know, everything runs through him. And at this point, he's got eight points, but I think he's the guy that's got to get your team rolling this half. Taking it strong right there, just as you said, John. Harris taking it up with the left hand to tie this one at 27. Barraza doing a good job in the lane. I know the, the Rocket fans maybe wanted to travel there, but he did a good job of settling himself and unfortunately turned the ball over Rockets just there. Force the turnover. Here is Neuschwander attacking the baseline again. Pulls up. Shot is good. Rockets back in front. I've watched Zach Neuschwander this season a couple times. I, I really like what he brings. He brings a lot of skill but just a lot of fundamentals. I mean, he gets in there, he pump fakes, he does everything right. He plays with a lot of energy. I love that about him. Two point lead for the Rockets, coming up on 2-13 remaining. As Barraza pulls up from 18 and knocks it down. Barraza, he's that guy who he forgets easily. You know, he's down the floor just a minute ago, almost traveled, committed the turnover, and you think, oh, he's, you know, hope he's not down on himself. He, he's forgot about it. He comes down the floor and just nails a free throw like it's nothing. He has 13 of Columbus Grove's 29 points. 
And we are tied again, and this one lost. It will stay with Pandora Gilboa. Coach Mike Lee is, I, I like his patience too. I mean, I, he's not panicking. He's gonna make sure that, you know, his team knows exactly what they need to do here. And it's still a little early to, I wouldn't say the word panic, but they know they're in for a battle against this Bulldog team. Pull up jumper by Aiden Harris is up and good. Back and forth we go in this one, 31-29. Yeah, Aiden Harris is so good. I'm telling you, he, he is really tough to guard defensively. Mays underneath, shot will not. Did they give him the shot? I think they did. I think it's gonna go underneath. No, maybe they did not. Okay, they did not give him the bucket. I thought that's, uh, that's some continuation for you there, but they didn't <laughs> give it to him. Kylan Mays did a good job there of setting his feet and getting in the lane, and he's aggressive, allowed him to, to get that foul. Ball inbound to Barraza. Double teamed and passes it off to Kyle Hopkins. And as soon as is driving in the lane, they're getting double coverage on him. I mean, they're immediately giving another defender to guard him. Just one of those situations that if he's going to be doubled, he's got to look for the open uh, player who's uh, waiting for an, open, for, the, for an open shot. Barraza fakes, and that one is blocked behind by Colin Harris, and Harris is going to pick up number three. I like what Colin Harris did there. Braza got him off of his feet, but he recovered and made it back. And it looked like a clean block, but obviously the officials have a much better angle than we do. You see it on the Union Bank instant replay. And well, in any case, it is a foul, and Barraza strokes the first one. That's the other thing about Trenton Barraza is not only he had 14 points tonight. A lot of those points have come from the free throw line. As he adds his 15th, he's done a good job of getting himself there, but more importantly, making them once he's mm -hmm. there. Back to 31 all, 56 seconds remaining. Gilboa quickly down the floor. Let's pass that off, almost a turnover, and that one is slapped away. We'll have a foul away from the basketball. That's going to be against Kylan Mays. That is his first, and he raises his hands as if to say, yep, that's me. <laughs> He's having a hard time hiding from anybody right now. <laughs> yeah. He's a good-looking kid, I'll tell you. Neuschwander from downtown. Dale's concrete three-pointer, no good. Rebound corralled by Harris. Bulldogs with an opportunity to take the lead here before the end of the third quarter. Yeah, and you know, at the end of the first half, they had a turnover right at the end, and then quickly Grove hit, or Pandora Gabo hit the triple to go up three. So, you know, if you're in this situation here, you want to be patient enough and smart enough to hold on to the basketball and get that final opportunity. Look at pass off underneath. May strong take with the right hand and gives Columbus Grove the lead. Beautiful pass, and now Grove gets a turnover. Barraza's going to get it. And Barraza can't misses. get it to go. Well, little look pass, looking for Mag, and a little miscommunication there. And that will give it to Columbus Grove with 2.6 seconds. That's a beautiful pass by Aiden Morris. I mean, it really was. I love the idea. Uh, the tough part is you're in transition, and uh, the guy you're passing to didn't see you. Final shot of the third quarter, and that one is going to be off the mark. End of three, and it is a 33-31 lead for Columbus Grove. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. The premier sponsor for Columbus Grove is uh, Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. And Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora is the quarter sponsor, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. And tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit Metzger Financial Services 
Mets.com. Plenty of opportunities for Metzger Financial Services timeouts coming in this fourth quarter. We would imagine Columbus Grove with a two-point lead over Pandora Gilboa, 33-31. Patrick Hamler, John Zerby here with you high above the court here at Columbus Grove High School and what has been a uh, PCL defensive showdown here on Tuesday night. Yeah, I'll tell you, this has been a fun game. I know it's only 33 to 31, and maybe we're expecting some high-flying action, maybe from Pandora Gilboa a little bit, but I'll tell you, both teams defensively have done a really nice job of limiting each other and making each shot really difficult. Columbus Grove inbounds the basketball with a two-point lead. Columbus Grove has not led for very much of this contest, and Barraza, nice, strong take with the right hand. And it's 35-31. Well, Pandora Gobo really hasn't had an answer for Trent Barraza. He's just really out-athleted out them. It's, it's the best way I can say it. <laughs> uh, just getting in the lane and doing his thing. Yeah, it was concrete three-pointer up and in by Aiden Harris. And perhaps this is Pandora Gilboa going to get going here in the fourth quarter. And that's the thing. Aiden Harris, especially when he starts shooting three-pointers, being at 6'4", he's really difficult to defend. He's a high-percentage shooter. That's why he's the leading scorer of this Rocket team. Fourth quarter against Bluffton on Saturday night. Pandora Gilboa went on a 20-0 run to put was was a close game away. That Dale's concrete three-pointer, no good. Mays, strong rebound underneath. Gets it back. Hopkins from the top of the key. Dale's concrete three is good. And at Metzger Financial Services, timeout. 6.54 to go in the fourth quarter. Stick around, this is going to be a good one here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Sprunger Interns with locations in Pandora and Bluffton. Go Rockets. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank, committed to you. Well, the fourth quarter is off to a flying start. 38-34 the score right now. Columbus Grove with their largest lead of the game so far. Largest lead for either side has been four points. I tell you, Grove is just, they really stepped it up. They did in the third quarter. They started matching Pandora Goboa's shots. And I mean, they're knocking down, they're knocking down buckets right now. Another Dale's concrete three-pointer. That one hard off the iron by Colin Harris and then the offensive rebound, and then Mays a little handsy there, not liking the call, but I don't know if you've ever liked a call that's gone against you defensively. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, 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 there's something about that. I know it's a foul, and, but I, I, I like what Kylan Mays is doing. He's being physical, and him and Nate Mag were going at it right there, but he's bringing this presence where Early in the game, it was, you know, Grove was getting a lot of open looks inside the lane. Harris lets go the three from the corner, no good. Best with the rebound. There's a nice rebound by Landon Best and a good job to bring things down and get it set up. You got a four point lead. You don't necessarily need a basket in this possession, but you could take some time off the clock and really frustrate Pandora Gaboa even more. Let's see how Connor Coles in Columbus Grove wants to play it. Looking for someone, finds best. Thought about the shot, and said he passes it out to Hopkins. Back to Barraza, they'll reset. And that was a smart move by Best to just make sure it wasn't the right look. Great nice pass. cut inside. Couldn't get it to fall with Zach Reynolds. And I'd say that's the look they wanted. It was a great pass by Barraza. Reynolds had the open look, just missed it. Harris with the basketball. Thought about looking for new Neuschwander underneath. Ball picked away by Zach Reynolds. Reynolds taking it strong, little too strong. Here, back the other way comes Aiden Harris with the basketball. Driving the paint, nice no-look pass. Looking for Mag, finds him up and in. What a beautiful pass. Nate Mag finishes. Metzger Financial Services timeout. 524 remaining in the fourth quarter. We'll take it as well. You're watching High School Boys Basketball Action here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 
Nip and tuck is how this fourth quarter is going to go, it looks like. 524 remaining, 38-36 Columbus Grove as the intensity has ratcheted up and we've had more stoppages of play here in the fourth quarter. I think that we had in the first three combined. Well, According to my sheet, that's the case. Well, and, and you know, the first three quarters, I, I like how the coaches just like, kind of let it play out and let the guys figure things out. But now you're in the fourth quarter, and things are tight. You know, it's an opportunity for them to make sure that every possession is important. That one off the foot of Harris. I'll redo it. Hopkins looking to inbound. Gets it to Bernesser and just a bit too high. And off the mark for Bernesser to corral it. He'll be out of bounds. Good pressure by Pandora Goboa. Uh, pressing, you know, they were pressing down the guards. Really left guys open what down below. What a pass inside and a foul. Getting it to Aiden Harris. What a dime. And a chance at a three-point play. I'll take Pandora Gilboa is at their best when Colin Harris is finding Aiden Harris. I mean, it just, those two back and forth, I mean, they're the leading scorers. They're both uh, have about the same amount of assists this year as well. It is a lot of fun to watch these two. Ties the game up at 38, and the Rockets with an opportunity to retake the lead. Bernesser comes out. Mays will check back in for him. An opportunity for PG to get back on top, and they do. And that's the guy I would go for right now. I would have the ball in Aiden Harris's hands until this end of the game. The Harrises, Colin and Aiden, contributing 28.1 points a game for Pandora Gilboa. So. Definitely want to get them up and going if they want to have a chance to win this one. Tonight, so far, they've combined for 23. Well, as you can see, Grove being very patient offensively, running in their motion offense, and. You know, Pandora Gilboa doing a nice job of making sure they're not going to get an easy look. They're extending past the three-point line, but hoping to maybe create a turnover, and they almost have just now. They did. And they did. So here we go. Huffman kicks it back out. And now the Rockets have the lead, kind of the same approach that Columbus Grove had a couple minutes ago. You don't have to force anything either. You can take time off the clock, and uh, you don't have to rush your shot. Yeah, and the problem is, is if you're Grove, you don't want to extend defensively too much here because the problem is, is the Harrises. I mean, they will, they will, they will burn you if you extend your defense too much. Colin controlling the basketball had it poked away by Best, and he gets it back. Looking around, nice defense by Hopkins, trying to drive inside and was denied. Now the work against Barraza, no good. Here's Harris again, and a little too much body from Kyle Hopkins as he will pick up his second foul. Yeah, and you know, you watch uh, Pandora Gilboa there get into that set and go from high tempo to patience. That's just good coaching, I'm telling you. When they can turn the switch like that and quickly go from a team that wants to score a lot to a team that can be really patient, mm -hmm. um, I, that takes a lot of discipline, and I credit that to their coaching. Harris driving in, nice kick around, looking for Huffman, and gets it to go. Beautiful dish by Colin Harris. He gets it inside to Owen Huffman, and now they're pushing that lead to three. 7-0 run for the Rockets. Gives them that three-point lead. Here's Barraza from downtown, and ties this one up again at 41. Metzger Financial Services timeout with 2.59 remaining in regulation. We'll be back here on WOSN. Welcome back, under three minutes to go in this one, 41-41. This one has been back and forth, Columbus Grove and Pandora Gilboa. 
And it has been a fun one to watch here tonight, John Zerby. Yeah, and I mean, it's really, the intensity's there, the rivalry's there. You know, I, I think that there's there's good parts of both teams that we've seen. We've seen both teams struggle a little bit, but here we are with under three minutes to go. It's tied up. They've answered each other each time down the floor. What a fun night to be part of high school basketball. Trenton Barraza pacing the Grove attack with 20 of their 41 points, and now the Rockets trying to retake the lead. Here's Aiden Morris with the Dales Concrete three. That one no good, and a foul. Yeah, I think they're gonna get Owen Huffman with over the back. Good box out by Columbus Grove. Gonna get... They, looks like they got, you know, they're gonna say it's Aiden Harris. Yeah. Aiden Harris picks up his second. Yeah, I guess just when, just when you think Pandora Gilboa is going to open it up, Grove answers. I love that triple by Trent Barraza right before the last timeout to just get them back into this game. You thought that maybe Pandora Gilboa was going to blow this thing wide open, and every time they've been in that opportunity or been in that circumstance, Grove answers. And that's really been the secret to tonight is that each team has had an answer for the other one all throughout the night, and you really get the sense that you know the team that has the ball last is going to be the one who wins this game. And you don't usually say that when it's been a defensive struggle, but in the case of this game tonight, it has been, you know, whoever has it last might come away with the win. How about that? Kyle Hopkins taking it up and in. Five points a night for Hopkins, and it's a two-point lead for the Bulldogs. And what's really crazy is that Grove has done a lot of this with Bo Burnesser on the bench. He's had those fouls early, and Kylan Mays has come in and done such a nice job defensively and also offensively dishing the ball out for the Bulldogs. Under 90 seconds and the foul against Colin Harris. And I think they're gonna get, it's gonna be against Zach Reynolds. That'll be, I'll take that back. They call it against Kyle Hopkins. That's his third. Fourth on the team and that will put Harris at the line to possibly tie this one back up. First foul shot, no good. Colin Harris is a 56% free throw shooter, he's 33 of 59 coming into this game. These are some big free throws right here, Patrick. Without a doubt, second free throw is no good. Grove catches a break and then trying to get the tie up, there was Aiden Harris and pleading his case and the official saying, nope, that's gonna be a foul. He was pleading his case too and I seen what the official said. You know, I seen both sides of that. It was a good idea by mm -hmm. Colin, excuse me, Aiden Harris to try to get in there and get a quick steal, but must have had a hand on the arm. Would have been a heads up play, possession arrow favoring the Rockets. And we come up on a minute 15. Grove forced the turnover. No, save. Landon Best able to hang on to it. Firing a pass inside to Zach Reynolds, and he is fouled. Landon Best just did a great job of maintaining his composure. There was, you know, the ball was in the middle to Braz. It looked like there could be a turnover. He maintained his composure and then made a beautiful pass inside to Zach Reynolds. Reynolds did a good job of getting Aiden Harris off the floor and getting himself to the free throw line. Zach Reynolds, first free throw, no good. So Aiden Harris, I'm gonna uh, take that back. Owen Huffman will sit out. Aiden Morris will check in. I think uh, Zach Neuswander has checked in as well, and that free throw is no good. And Pandora Gilboa caught a break there with those two missed free throws, and now the game, one possession under a minute. It's going to be interesting to see what Mike Lee draws up, Coach Mike Lee draws up. They will talk it over. 57 seconds remaining. It's a two-point Columbus Grove lead. You're watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Back to action here on WOSN from Columbus Grove High School. Two-point lead for the Bulldogs over the Pandora Gilboa Rockets. 43-41 in a contest that has been uh, nip and tuck all the way. This one has been close. And so far, I mean, I, we're not at the wire, but we're pretty close to it. So I guess you could say that this one is uh, coming down to the wire. Yeah, and this has just been an awesome game. You know, Grove coming to this game 9-7. and seven. Pandora, Pandora Gilboa 15-2. and two. So you look at it on paper and you think, 
Pandora Gilboa's, you know, going to win this one easily. I love what Groves brought to the table tonight. They've really played well, really done a lot of good things out here. But Pandora Gilboa as well, they've, they've made things exciting as well. This last minute's going to be a lot of fun. Harris pulls up, 17-footer, got it, we're tied. And a Metzger Financial Services timeout as we plot again. 18 points for Harris, 41.2 remaining. We'll be back here on WOSN. Forty-one point two seconds remaining in regulation. All tied up here at forty-three. Columbus Grove and Pandora Gilboa. And as we've mentioned, you look at this one on paper. This was probably going to be a pretty solid win tonight for the Rockets, but Columbus Grove has come to play, trying to defend home court. They have the basketball with thirty-one seconds. And they're going to do everything that they can, Patrick, to play for this final shot. I don't, I don't know if they're going to get that opportunity because of the aggressive defense by Pandora Gilboa, but they do not want to give the Rockets the, the final opportunity to, for a look at the rim. PG has one foul to give if they choose to do that. Doesn't look like that's the case. 43 seconds, uh, I'm sorry, tied to 43. Nine seconds to go. Barraza going to hold it. And they will call one more timeout. We will take it as well. Six seconds remaining from either the end of the contest or more basketball. Find out next, WOSN. Welcome back, 6.2 seconds remaining. All tied at 43. Columbus Grove taking the Metzger Financial Services timeout. And uh, who do you think gets the basketball here? Who do you go well, to? Yeah, I mean, Trent Barraza, of course. <laughs> Barraza got know, 20 points tonight. He, he's done it all. I mean, you know, that's the logical choice. But, you know, at the same time, you think he is going to be double covered here. So maybe something else is drawn up. I know Landon Best is a good shooter. Maybe they, they look somewhere else. To... Barraza has it. Five seconds. Four. Takes it, and he is fouled. There's that foul to give. Good, smart play there by Colin Harris. And that will, I'm uh, sorry, that was, yeah, that was Colin Harris. So that's his fourth. And we will have a, another timeout. So we will keep it here for this one, 2.4 seconds remaining. And uh, if you're Columbus Grove right now, you're, you've pretty much gotten yourself into a, a catch and shoot or something to where, you know, maybe you try and get something down low and get some contact, try to get to the line. And that's where the free throw rule changing this year has come into play because now you can come into the fourth quarter and maybe you haven't, you know, had, maybe you're not in the bonus. Obviously, neither team is in the bonus. If we foul at this point, both teams will be in the bonus. But when you have that foul to give, you can wait till three, two seconds and then foul quickly and now it really messes up the flow of what yep. the other team has planned so that's a little bit of a change and I, I've seen it done both ways that you know it's come to the advantage of the offensive team and I think in this situation coach Mike Lee did a really good job that was planned and I kind of seen him point mm -hmm. and they fouled quickly with 2.4 seconds to go now this this play is drawn up completely different it's got to be like you said catch and shoot so we'll see if that changes where the basketball goes to. Landon Best will still inbound. 2.4 on the clock, all tied at 43. Barraza with 20 points tonight of the Bulldogs, 43. Here we go. Ball goes into Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins gets it off from half court. No. And we have overtime here at Columbus Grove. It is all tied up at 43 as we have bonus basketball here on WOSM. Overtime action here on WOSN after 32 minutes of basketball. It is tied at 43 between Columbus Grove and Pandora Gilboa. So we will tip it off and have four more minutes to decide this one. And the tip controlled by the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. This game has been so back and forth. No bigger lead than four points, and you see Barraza go to the hole. Wow, Trent Barraza. Takes it strong, and one of the PG players 
getting the uh, bad end of that. Looks like it's Aiden Morris, number 10. Maybe got popped in the face. Looks like that after Barraza took the ball to the hole, they just both got kind of tangled up underneath the, the rim, and I'm glad they both were able to get up okay. But very sportsmanship wise for Lane and Best to go over there and help him up. Shows a lot of respect between the two teams. Without a doubt. So now the Rockets trying to avoid what will only be their third loss of the season. Columbus Grove trying to pick up win number 10. Here's a Dale's Concrete three-pointer. Up and good. And the Rockets retake the lead. Dale Neuschwander from downtown. Yeah, Neuschwander, I'll tell you. Like I said earlier, his fundamentals are just impeccable. And in a moment when they need him to come through, he's not necessarily their best three-point shooter, but it went through that time. Zach Neuschwander with the Dale's Concrete three-pointer. Rockets with a one-point lead. Mace the basketball. He takes it strong inside off. Balance with the right hand. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kylan Mays is just, he's had an outstanding game. He's coming to this game, relieving Burnesser, and he has just thrived. Six points for Mays. Seemingly in strategic points. And Grove back on top, 47-46. Harris taking this one up and in off the glass. This has been a fun overtime. They're back and forth. Yep. Love that Colin Harris took it to the lane there and got vertical, pushing this rocket lead to one. Barraza with the basketball. Almost halfway through the first overtime. Mays has it, kicks it back out. Hopkins, Dale's concrete three on the way, short. Off the front iron, rebounded by Barraza. Nice look by Kyle Hopkins. It was an open look, it was a good shot. But then again, Grove hustling on the offensive side to grab that rebound, Barraza. Then he resets things, which I thought, resets things, which I thought was a really good move by him as well. Reynolds looking the other side of the court and Colin Harris using those long arms, knocking that one away. It will stay down here with Columbus Grove. Lee Schwander checks out. Owen Huffman will take his place. Landon Best to inbound. And has to get it in and does into the hands of Zach Reynolds. Reynolds kicks it out. Hopkins for three. That one off the mark going left. Harris with a rebound. Again, good look for Hopkins. He just couldn't get it to fall. Now under a minute and a half to play. Pandora Gilboa here. They can be really patient. They don't have to take a shot early. They can be patient with what they want to do. And Hopkins going for the steal and commits the foul. And you know, all fouls now will take each team to the free throw line. I don't think that's a bad foul though. Colin Harris has kind of struggled from the free throw line. Yeah. Last time he, was the, he, missed, he missed both of them. And this is a situation where if you can keep the, the game within one score, then you're gonna be okay. Came into the game 55% from the charity strike. Hits the first one. And that's a big one. I mean, that was uh, a great job stepping up and knocking down that free throw. Second free throw on the way for Harris is good. Three-point lead for Pandora Gilboa. It's all Colin Harris needed. It was just the game on the line. And, you right, know, yeah. he was able to knock him down. Just some extra pressure is all that was required. Metzger Financial Services timeout. 1-10 remaining in overtime. It's a three-point lead for PG. We're, you're watching high school basketball action here on WOSN. Overtime action here on WOSN. Pandora Gilboa with a three-point lead over Columbus Grove. 110 remaining in overtime. It's Columbus Grove basketball. Not much in the way of comebacks or streaks or anything like that. This game has been pretty much between uh, you know, within four points on either side the entirety of the contest. And now it's Columbus Grove trailing three. Best kicks out Hopkins. Hopkins to tie and that's short. Well, I don't think they needed a, a, a three-point attempt there. I think they could have easily went for two and then played defense. But now if you're 
drove, you're probably in this position where you're going to need to foul so you can get the ball back. And indeed they will. May is committing the foul on Aiden Morris, so that will send Morris to the line. That's the third foul on Mays, and now you're in a situation, if you're Pandora Gilboa, where the game is yours if you can knock down your free throws. Yeah, I mean, it's as simple as that. You make your free throws, you push it to two possession game, and if you do that, which we see, Aiden Morris comes to the line with ice in his veins as well. It's gonna be a real uphill battle for Grove to get back into this one. Second free throw is no good. Four point lead. Pandora Gilboa, 51-47. Grove brings it up, and as, he, as you mentioned, they don't need a three-pointer. Barraza pulls up from 17. That one no good. Tipped back up and fouled is Zach Reynolds. So Reynolds will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, it was a good take by Barraza. I thought that was a smart shot. Got the open look, couldn't get it to fall. Zach Reynolds did a really nice job of getting vertical, getting himself in position for the putback and was able to draw the foul. And it's important that these free throws are so important at this point. First foul on Nate Mag, and that free throw is no good by Reynolds. Columbus Grove has missed their last three, I think now, free throws here in the fourth quarter in overtime. Second free throw is up and good. Back to a one possession game, 51-48. And a foul. It's a good foul by Landon Best. You know, sending Aiden Morris back to the free throw line. You know, he's, Morris is back in that situation that he was in just a moment ago where you've got that three point lead. If you hit at least half of these, one out of two, it's a two possession game. So, Aiden Morris just take a deep breath and knock these down. First one is good. You know, when you're Pandora Gilboa, you're 15 and two, you're at the top of the Putnam County League, you're gonna, you're gonna face this every week. You're gonna face team's best shots. And I think Grove has given their best shot tonight. You've seen how well they can play. And I really give nice free throw by Morris there. I give Pandora Gilboa a lot of credit for just surviving. Some nights you just survive, Patrick. Landon Best pulls up a three pointer. That one no good. Thought maybe he'd have some contact. Here's a long pass to wrap this one up. And up and good, Pandora Gilboa's largest lead of the night. 55-48 with nine seconds to go. And that's how quick it can turn. I mean, they can pull away really quickly. Barraza puts it up, three seconds remaining, in and out. Mays will throw it up, no good, it won't matter. Pandora Gilboa with the seven point win in overtime as they take care of business on the road tonight against Columbus Grove, 55-48. A seven point win for a game that was uh, much, much closer than the seven points would indicate tonight. That is gonna wrap it up for us here. Wanna thank our folks for helping us put this together. Kelsey Beimer, Jacob O'Neill, and our entire WOSN staff. Once more in the final, 55-48 in overtime. Pandora Gilboa with the win over Columbus Grove. For John Zerby and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Handler saying so long, everyone, from Columbus Grove.